before you start working on your amplifier, make sure your environment is a suitable workplace. Somewhere where you can easily see what you're doing, make sure there's no liquids nearby, and also make sure any jewellery is removed before starting work on your amp. So what is biasing? Biasing is setting the amount of current which travels through these two valves, or in some cases four valves, whilst the amplifier is in an idle state. We want to set the bias in an optimum position where it's not too hot and it's not too cold. Think of it like when you start your car. You put the key in the ignition and the car starts as you twist the key. The rev counter climbs up, but you don't want it to sit in like a redlining position making lots of noise. You want it to sit quite low, but not so low that the car is barely able to start. This is exactly the same what we're going to be doing for our output valves. We want to get the most tone out of our valves, that warm valve feeling, but we don't want to be pushing them too hard so that they have barely any lifespan. Before we bias our amplifier, there's one quick check we need to make. We need to ensure that the bias selector switch has been set appropriately for the output valves we're going to be fitting into our amplifier. In this case, we have a V40, which can take EL34s or 6L6s. For 6L6s, we set the bias toggle switch towards the valves, or if we're selecting EL34s, as in this case, the selector switch must be moved facing away from the valves. All this information can be found on the back cage or in the manual of your amplifier. Some amplifiers, this will be different, so for our Sheriff 25, this is fitted with either EL86s or EL84s. If you're still confused, you can always drop us an email. To begin biasing your amplifier, you're going to need to remove the base. You'll need something strong and stable to support one side of the amplifier as it will have to be turned upside down. Something like a strong book or flat surface is the perfect candidate for this job. You're going to need a screwdriver and also a multimeter for this job. To begin, you're going to need to remove all of the screws from the base panel. Before working on your amplifier, please make sure it's been switched off for at least an hour so that it's no longer warm to the touch and so that any lethal voltages will have discharged. So now that the base is removed, you can put this to one side, leaning against the side of the amplifier. You're going to want to plug in a dummy load or a speaker cabinet. Make sure that the impedances are matching and you're also going to then want to plug in an IEC power cable into the rear of your amplifier. Make sure it's set to standby on the front panel and switch on. Give it a couple of minutes just to get warm. Now that your amplifier is switched on and set to the high power mode, make sure all of the controls are turned down to zero. Make sure any switches are set to their off position or to their upward position. Now we're going to test for the bias itself. To do this, you're going to need a multimeter. Set your multimeter to DC millivolts. So take your black probe and put this to the ground screw located here. And then take your red probe and place this on test point eight. This is a small test point underneath of where your power valves sit. Now test test point 10 with the red probe. When checking your multimeter, you'll see you have two numbers now. If you remember these numbers, you want to try and find a balance between these two. What we're going to be doing is setting this number to around 34 millivolts. Now, taking a small Phillips or flathead screwdriver, we're now going to adjust the trim pot, which will change the amount of current which is sent through your output valves. The bias trim pot can usually be found on the left-hand side of the PCB, or it can be found on the rear panel of the amplifier on some of our later models. You want to turn this clockwise if the bias is set lower than 34 millivolts, or anti-clockwise if this is higher than 34 millivolts. Go in small increments and check in between each time you twist the potentiometer 
taking measurements. Same as before, go straight into the ground screw here and then to test point 8 and then to test point 10. Minor alterations may need to be made every now and again just to get that perfect balance. You may notice both of your valves may slightly be out by one or two millivolts, which is fine. Just try and get them both as close to 34 as possible. So maybe one at 33 and one might be at 35. This is perfectly acceptable. One important consideration to make, if you're not confident working on high voltage circuits, take your amplifier to a technician. It's not worth risking your life just to swap out the valves on your amplifier.